Today's uh, lecture is chapter seven, earthquakes. Of course, if we are speaking about earthquakes, then we should uh, refer to some of our previous lectures, especially plate tectonics, because earthquakes are related to plate tectonics. Uh, let's just see what is here. A reminder from pre previous lectures, uh, we said that uh, the shape of the Earth did not reach what it is now, except after being subjected to lots of forces. Scientists uh, divided these forces into two groups endogenic forces, exogenic forces. What are endogenic and exogenic? We said endogenics are internal processes that comes or, or originates from the inside of the earth. Exogenic, they are external. They come from the earth's atmosphere to affect the shape of the earth. So. Uh, this shape of the continents, it was not the same when the Earth was created. It was something different. It changed with time to reach this shape. Uh, this time, we will just see, uh, say quickly what we just took in the previous lecture about the exogenic forces, which are the, the external forces, and we said that these external forces are destructive for the Earth. What do we mean by destructive for the Earth? They destroy a little bit the shape of the plates of the Earth. And we, we said, as an example, for these exogenic forces, weathering, mass wasting, and erosion, and this was uh, the subject of the previous lecture, you can refer to it. Uh, uh, endogenic forces, the, these are the internal forces. We said that these the, are the forces that construct the shape of the Earth, and we divided it into two groups, fast process and slow process. And we said that the fast process include earthquakes and volcanoes. So this is our subject for today. We are going to study earthquake. So earthquakes are the fast process of the uh, endogenic forces, which are the constructive forces that increases the shape of the earth, increases the layers of the earth. What is an earthquake? To define an earthquake, we have to know few uh, definitions. Earthquake is a sudden shaking of the ground caused by the passage of seismic waves through Earth's rock. It means that earthquake is shaking of the plates, but it is shaking. Why it is shaking? It is shaking because plates uh, have waves flowing inside it. These waves has lots of energy, and this energy is suddenly released. Releasing of this energy makes lots of waves. These waves uh, vibrates the, uh, the, the, the plates of the, uh, of the Earth. Seismic waves are produced when, this is very, very important, this, this definition, stored energy in Earth's crust is suddenly released. It means that whenever plates are moved, they generate energy. This energy is stored, and so on, stored and stored and stored, till it reaches a limit where all of the released energy are expelled outside. What is an earthquake? This usually happens when masses of rock suddenly fracture and slide against one another. 
Earthquakes occur mainly along geologic faults when rock, when rock masses move in relation to one another. This usually happens when masses of rock suddenly fracture and slide against one another. So let, let, let's, let's check the drawing. If I have this piece of plate, if this plate is subjected to this force, red, the, the red arrow and this red arrow, what will happen? What we, uh, when this fo force compresses the, the plate, the plate is moved like this. So I'm storing energy inside this plate. I'm just as if I'm trying to, to, to break this plate, but I cannot. So I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing till the plate is moved, but I, nothing happens. Then, when I increase the forces and the stored energy is excessive, suddenly there will be a fault. The plate will break. Once the plate will break, it will release the stored energy inside because the sides of this fault will move relative to one another. Once a fault happens, it means that it is a location of expected movement in the future because now it is cracked. So it can uh, uh, release energy easily anytime. Applying this to the, uh, to the earth itself, you will find that if this is the earth and we said that these are the plates of the earth, so the edges between the plates, we said here that if I have a fault here or an edge between two plates, this is a place where I expect that earthquakes may happen. So this is a plate, this is, uh, this is the Pacific plate. Along the edge of the Pacific plate, these yellow circles represent the amount of previous earthquakes that happened in the earth. So all of these yellow locations are places of previous earthquakes. So it means that within the plate from inside, we, we approximately have nothing. Here we don't have anything. Here we don't have anything. But at, the, at these red lines, which are the, 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 the edges of these plates, we have lots of earthquakes. That's why in Arabic we say Hizam al-Zalazil. What is Hizam al-Zalazil? As if it is a belt, belt of earthquakes. It is this location or this line where I have lots of expected earthquakes to, that has happened in the, in the past and is expected to happen again in the, in, in the future. So all of these are locations where we have earthquakes. Let's check, trace them on the map. Here is Japan. Of course, we know that Japan is يعني, full of earthquakes every time. If, you, if I go here, I will find something at the north of Egypt. It is in Cyprus, Turkey. Most of our earthquakes that, that arrives to Egypt are either coming from Turkey, from uh, 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 Cyprus, and, and, and so on. So, at the location, at the boundaries of these plates, these are the locations of the expected earthquake. To proceed further, I have to know a few definitions. The first definition is the focus. What is the focus of the earthquake? The focus of the earthquake is the location from where the start of the earthquake, uh, from, from where the, the earthquake originates. This is the point from which energy is, starts to be released. Once the energy is released from this focus, waves propagate inside the, the, the plate till it reaches points, uh, yani distances away from this location. We hear also something called epicenter. What is an epicenter? Epicenter is the point on the Earth, on the Earth's surface directly above the focus. 
So as if it is the projection of the focus, but on the surface of the earth. Because if I am on top of the earth, then I will say that I have an earthquake down below at this point. It may be kilometers away, but it is just below on this point, on this epicenter. So epicenter is the center of the earthquake, but it is the projection of the center on the surface of the earth. The focus is the real center of the, of the earthquake. These are all the seismic waves that happen due to the re release of the energy. This is the fault because you cannot have, you cannot have the focus at this point because inside here or inside here. Why? Because it is just one solid point. It cannot be a place for the release of energy. How come energy would penetrate a, a, a solid? Energy penetrates or, or the, the effect of the energy penetrates cracks or faults. So this is uh, the focus. It should be lying exactly on a fault plane. This is also very, something very, very important in, in your normal daily life. You hear a lot about something called aftershocks. What are aftershocks? And why it is important? First thing you have to know is that in earthquakes, the earth moves. But is it stable all over the time? No, it is moving all over the time. If you, if you go to any station where they record earthquakes, you will find that they can record lots of earthquakes along the day. But we don't feel it because it is minor movement, just minor movement of these uh, plates. But sometimes, so this, these yellow, Columns, they represent the daily activities. Every, every day, every time we have some activities, but we don't feel it. But sometimes these activities increase a little bit. So when it increases, we may feel it. So sometimes you, uh, uh, one of your friends would tell you, did you feel the earthquake of today? And you say, no, I did not feel it because it was something here where some people may feel it and some other people may not feel it at all. So it is just an intermediate power of earthquake. Then suddenly a major earth movement happens. When this major movement happens, this is the main shock. This is, this is what we a measure and what we say that this is the major when I say that there was an earthquake with the magnitude of six it means that the main shock was of a magnitude of six so this is the main shock so we have the main shock we have the four shock which are the movement that happened it was censored by some people but others were uh, did not sense it or maybe all of all of us censored it but it was very uh, 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 moderate. So then the, the main shock would happen. After the main shock, always we expect few movements. They are not as strong as the main shock, but they are, we can call them also strong. Why they are important? Because usually, if you have an earthquake, and you have a building that collapsed during this earthquake. And then this earthquake stopped. What will happen? People would rush into buildings to get others that are trapped inside. So people would go again to this building. And this building may have already been subjected to cracks due to the main earthquake. So this building is about to fall. So when other people go again to this building, this building would fall again, taking more casualties. So aftershocks are important because you are facing buildings that may not be in their 
best condition and people may be gathered at this location just to help others to get outside. So this building would collapse again. So aftershocks are very important. So from this figure, we need to understand few terminologies and you have to add them to your uh, terminology list. The background activities are the normal shocks are the normal movement that happen every day and people do not feel it at all. Uh, four shocks are the, the, the movement that happens before the main shock, the main earthquake, and they may be sensed by some people and not by the other, or sensed by all of us, but we, we, they are very moderate. Then the main shock is the main shock of the earthquake, and based on the magnitude of this main shock, we can call that this earthquake has a magnitude of so and so. Aftershocks are a little bit strong uh, shocks, but they happen after the main shock, and in Arabic they are called tawabi' as zilzal, and they are very important in our everyday life. Oh, uh, in studying earthquake, I have to measure, I have to record this earthquake. How can I record an earthquake? To record an earthquake, I have an instrument called seismograph. So also seismograph is something that you have to know, to add them to your terminologies. What is the seismograph? It's an instrument that makes a record of seismic waves caused by an earthquake or explosion. Uh, it may record uh, uh, an uh, uh, a bomb explosion or a, a test, atomic test or nuclear test in, in one place because it will affect the, 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 the movement of the ground. Seismographs are equipped with electromagnetic sensors that translate ground motion into electrical changes which are proce uh, processed and recorded by the instrument uh, analog or digital circuit. So I have, of course, uh, the, the, these equipment were uh, 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 modified a lot along the years. They are now very accurate and very uh, uh, sensitive. Uh, they, uh, whenever the ground shakes, we have a movement here and this movement is recorded the amplitude of this movement is very important. If I have a strong earthquake, I will have a big amplitude. If I have a moderate earthquake, the magnitude will be moderate and so on. What are the seismic waves? Seismic waves are divided into two types. They are either body waves or surface wave. Body waves, from the name, it moves inside the body of the Earth, within the crust. Surface waves, it moves along the surface of the, of the Earth. So these are two types of waves. By, uh, by the way, these waves are very important because our study, for, wh why are we studying earthquake? We are studying earthquake because scientists Yani they, 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 they think that one day they may be able to expect an earthquake. They want to reach a, 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 a time when they can say that tomorrow, take care, you will have an earthquake. Similar now to uh, what we say that uh, take care, tomorrow you will have a storm or tomorrow you will have uh, uh, bad weather in, in one place. So they, 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 they need to have this knowledge because earthquakes are devastating. So if I manage to expect an earthquake early, it means that I can uh, 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 save lots of life. So how can they do this? By recording these waves. We said that the earth is moving all of the time. So are there some a kind of relation that we can deduce that when I fi find uh, some kind of wave, then it means that I expect an earthquake within a certain period of time, maybe. So that's why it is very important to define all types of waves that happen 
before the earthquake, during the earthquake, and after the earthquake. So, body waves, there are two types of wave. Primary or P wave, secondary or S wave. Uh, I prefer to, 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 to understand the meaning, to, to say that P wave, take it as pressure wave. S wave, take it as shear wave, because actually this is the shape of the wave, the, the, uh, or the, 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 the reason for the wave. The reason for the P wave, it's a pressure, pressure inside the earth. The reason for S wave, it is shear force inside the earth. So either you call it primary wave, pressure wave, and this secondary wave or shear wave, or even P wave and S wave, all of these are the same. So these are the body waves, and these are very important because this is really what we uh, record to try to trace the earthquake. Surface wave, we have uh, these uh, uh, waves uh, propagating along the surface of the earth. They are called either the R wave or L wave. L, they are called love wave. Uh, Rayleigh uh, waves are the R wave. By the way, these are the names of scientists, the scientists who discovered these. So, in general, we have L wave, R wave, S wave, and B wave. Now I have a question, try to concentrate. If I tell you, tell me the cent what is the name of the center of the body wave and what is the name of the center of the surface wave? Can you tell me from this figure? What is the name of the center of the body wave. We said that the body waves moves inside the earth and the surface wave moves on top of the earth. Can you give me the name of the center of both waves? A body is the focus, correct? The epicenter, the epicenter. That, that, that's why. So now we are trying to relate what we have just said here, that this is the focus and this is the epicenter. So the focus is the center of the body wave. The epicenter is the center of the surface wave. So now we are trying to connect uh, yani, terminologies together so that we can understand what is happening. And, uh, all, all of the waves makes problem, but is the problems devastating or is it moderate or is it mild or is it negligible? Yeah, it, it, it differs, but any, any wave in the ground, it may be annoying. Yeah, just just to, to feel that there is a wave passing below your legs, it may be annoying to some people. So yani, the degree of the, uh, of the bad effect differs. Let's discuss the shape of the waves. To discuss the shape of the waves, first, body waves, we have the P wave. We said that the P wave are just pressure wave. How pressure waves Propagate. How can I? Yani, I'm trying to give you uh, uh, waves are something that you cannot see. So I'm trying to give you something so that you can imagine what is the shape of this wave. Imagine that you have a spring like this and you stretch the spring and then suddenly push it inside, compress it, give it a pressure. What will happen? It will be compressed here, and this compression is going to move along the spring. It will move till it reach here. So this is exactly what is happening inside the earth. Something pushes the, 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 the plate, and once it pushes the plate, a, a pressure wave propagates horizontally to reach a distance away from the source. 
This is exactly what is happening. Let's see it here. It's the same. Imagine that you have these posts, uh, say uh, 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 cables are uh, 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 were stretching along these posts, and you have a pressure, a P wave that started from this side. Once it starts to propagate from this side, it means part of the, uh, of the plate will be compressed. And this compressed part is going to move horizontally from one place to the other. It means that it will be moving everything on top here. If it moves everything on top, these lines will be broken. This is uh, 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 normal. So a P wave, this is the shape of P wave as a simulation, and this is the shape of P wave in normal life. Secondary wave. You see cowboys when they uh, uh, play with the rope. Imagine that you have a rope like this, and you stretch it with your hand, and suddenly you try, you move your hand up and down. If you move your hand, wave your hand up and down, the rope will have a wave that will propagate along this rope till it reaches the end of the rope. So as an opposite, here it was movement horizontal, horizontal movement. Here it is vertical wave, but it is also moving horizontal. This is a simulation. If I have something like this, the si similar to the previous one, the earth will be moving up and down. Maybe cables would not be broken because the movement are not very big. But if the movement is also very big, it may, the amplitude of the movement is very big, it may cause uh, uh, br broken uh, cables to be uh, uh, to be seen. The third type, or the first type in the surface wave, is called the R wave. For the R wave, we said that the R wave is the ground. It's the rotation of the ground. Ground surface moves in an elliptical path opposite to the direction of the wave propagation. If the wave is going like this, then the surface of the Earth is moving like this. In, it, it, it is, of course, the, the, the propagation in, in this direction. Once it is propagation, propagating, then the, the top surface is just uh, moving in a circle in the opposite direction of the propagation. Here, it is extremely destructive to building. This is for you. Uh, uh, you, you, you we were discussing some, something about the degree of the devastation. Is it, uh, we said that the surface wave may not be devastating. No, in some cases, it is very bad. Why? Because the shape of the movement is not tolerable by buildings. If I have the surface, moving in circles and this, this circular movement is propagating along the surface, it will destroy everything on top. So this wave, when it happens, it is very uh, 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 bad. So, but how bad is it? It's something It depends on the, the intensity of each uh, uh, earthquake. Uh, the third type is called uh, no no this is the the the, the, the same it's the same R R wave but this is in normal life I, imagine that this is the the, the 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 circular or the elliptical movement of the wave and this is the the, the direction of the propagation once this happened the earth cracks and this crack widen and then it is closed and so on it, it, it's it's a lot of devastation. The third, the fourth type of wave, and it is the second type of the surface waves, it's called love wave or L wave. L wave, it is the surface moving right and left. That's, that's how it is. 
if if I imagine I have a force like this, another here like this, another here like this, then my surface will be squeezed like this or twisted like this. So side to side motion of the ground surface cannot travel through fluid. This is this is important for love wave. If if I have uh, its surface is and and if the surface I have to cross a river or to cross a sea, then it will stop at this location and it will not continue. This is the shape of the surface uh, L wave in normal uh, life. Uh, this is a summary of all of the three, uh, four waves in one figure. Uh, we have P wave, S wave. These are uh, body waves propagate, starting, originating from the focus of the earthquake. Love wave and uh, relay, uh, relay uh, wave. These are waves, uh, surface waves, and they propagate starting from the epicenter. This is the shape. Here, I prefer to say P wave is a pressure wave. So it is a compression that is propagating along the full mass of the plate. Here, S wave, it is a shear wave. Shear means that the part of the soil is going up and part of the soil is going down, uh, part of the plate up and part of the plate down. And this is propagating along the uh, body of the uh, 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 of the plate. So this is the P wave, the S wave. Uh, the L wave and the, the R wave, L wave is going uh, on, the, on the surface right and left. Uh, R wave are circular or elliptical motion of the surface. So this is the summary of this uh, 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 motion, different motion. Uh, to go to the next part of the lecture, we, we can stop here for a while and then continue the next part of our lecture.